Welcome back to Key Point here on TV3. We're live on 3FM 92.7, also on TV3 Ghana, on Facebook, DSTV Channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. We're also live on a number of uh, radio stations in Tamale, as well as some parts of the Upper West region. Now, this week, a number of things that happened. My guest joining me in studio, Professor Enoch Enchi, is a governance and policy analyst. He is the dean of the School of Com Business and Communications at the Academic City University. Professor Enoch Enchi, good morning. Thank you for joining us on Key Point. Good morning, Alfred. I'm always thrilled to be here. And a happy new year to you because this is the <laughs> first time you're coming on Key Point in the year 2024. It's going to be a long road for Yes, us. happy new year to all our viewers and listeners all over the world. We love them. Great. Martin Pebble is a private legal practitioner. He is the lead, one of the leaders of one, uh, three individual bondholder groups. Also, the convener of the Kumi Prekorilo the demonstration, Lea Martin Pebu. Good morning. Welcome. Morning. He it's says, I shouldn't Great say he is one of the foremost human rights lawyers <laughs> in this country. <laughs> <laughs> but you only earn that kind of accolade if there is a lot to show for it as well. So you show your scorecard. Your scorecard is Pebu 1, Pebu 2. God and country. I always say that it's the Supreme Court we should thank for all those groundbreaking decisions because on, they decide on people number one two and three and four uh -huh. and beyond that so they decide if they look at it and they are not interested they throw you out quick there are others that they looked at and they were interested they threw them out so the supreme court should be thankful thanks to the supreme court mm -hmm. and thanks to you as well for taking the matter up to mm -hmm. even have the supreme court pay mm -hmm. attention to it yeah also alfred thompson is a financial analyst but a member of the New Patriotic Party, a former Deputy Managing Director of the National Investment Bank, NIB, and also a number of banks that he's worked with in this country and, and beyond. Mr. Thompson, good morning. Welcome. Good morning, Alfred. How are you doing? I'm well. And happy Thank new year. You. Many, many, many this operators. Is a year of this... so <laughs> it's up to you to make it possible. <laughs> we will show up every morning to make it possible. And greetings from Dr. Alaji Mahmoud Baumia. Oh. Yes. When, this morning when I said it is possible, you, you said every expression these days that we, we, we use, politicians are it's, taking it. You don't even allow us it, to... It's good you have that positive mind. It's about positivity. Oh, that yes. is what can make things achievable. <laughs> Alfred Thompson, welcome. Thank you. Okay. Now, we'll be joined shortly I by Kofi Adams. <laughs> You've blown your chances. Blow your chances oh, at so, um, so, slow seven down. years. Waste, uh, waste, waste, waste. It's a regret. Well, we've not started yet, right? <laughs> slow down. It's like he's, he's just <laughs> made his mind up. You never listen <laughs> to other opinions. Oh, okay. They say we should slow, but listen to other opinions. He who feels <laughs> it no, no, no. knows it. Mm -hmm. And here, an inflation is through the roof and opinion. everything. We are dying. Listen, 19 people died. Over 4 million Ghana. 19 open human beings. And you were sharing open, money to delegates. Have an open mind. No, what Martin open mind? Lawyer. You were sharing money okay, to delegates thank you. when 19 thank you. people died. Over 4 million thank you. Ghana. Thank you. And thank you spent thank over 40 you. million. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> the Member of Parliament for the Boehm constituency, Kofi Adams, will be joining us in a bit um, to also have the discussion this morning. But. As was suspected by the, at least, the dictates of the Special Prosecutor's Office in fulfillment of its mandate as captured in the laws establishing the Office of the Special Prosecutor. This week, the Special Prosecutor released the half-year report ending the year 2023. I want to get that, get that out of the way because it captures a number of things. And... For instance, the prosecutions that are ongoing, the former PPA boss, ABAJ, and Francis Kwekwahing on the contract for sale expose by Anas, sorry, that's Manasseh Azura Wone and the team at the Fourth Estate. Also, the former Nothing Development Authority boss corruption allegation, which I do know 
that lawyer Martin Pebo, you are neck deep into this case, isn't it? The NDA case. Yeah, the NDA case. So that's mm -hmm. also one that the mm -hmm. special prosecutor is. Mm -hmm. yeah, the trial into. has gone far. The it's gone prosecution far. is about to close this case, or it's even almost done. The Called a number of witnesses. More than seven so far have testified. Seven people have testified mm -hmm. in the in this case. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's against the CEO mm -hmm. and then the and the deputy. Yes, two deputies. The two deputies. Mm -hmm. Alexander Safo Kantanka's bribery allegation is also one that the special prosecutor in the Sun prosecution is ongoing on the matter. Mm -hmm. The other cases, the Cecilia Dapa missing cash scandal, which we will come to because there's an update mm -hmm. on what the special prosecutor is talking about. Plus, the Charles Bissu suit challenging the OSP arrest warrant. This week, there was a development in mm -hmm. that regard. The mm -hmm. court throughout that that one mm -hmm. then you uh, the investigations that have been concluded mm -hmm. the alleged bribery of majority mps by a businessman we discussed that extensively when and the appear could be joined us and as he has taken his individual position not to tell us the Ghanaian people who the identity of the businessman is the special prosecutor indicated in that report that he know at least they were able to establish the identity of the this businessman but they they did not disclose it in the report that they issue that has been concealed the members of parliament who made this allegation as well are not willing to tell you and i who the businessman is so the special prosecutor says well on the basis of that you know, it's concluded on the case. Unless any new developments or evidence is brought to it, mm -hmm. it cannot mm -hmm. continue with this case. The Charles Dubohen alleged influence peddling in the investigative documentary by Anas Arimi Anas. We've discussed that as well on this platform where Martin Pebo has mm -hmm. a different opinion yeah. about the conclusions made by the OSP. Mm -hmm. The use of the office by Charles Bissu during the tenure as Secretary of the Interventional Committee on Illegal Mining. This is the ongoing investigation. The GRA and Finance Ministry contract with SML. In fact, this week, the Minerals Commission also distanced itself from the SML contract mm -hmm. with the GRA. So there's a lot that is coming up with this GRA SML matter. And bear in mind, I think the two weeks mm -hmm. period yeah, yeah, it's elapsed. that KPMG was giving mm -hmm. to audit this GRA SML contract mm -hmm. has elapsed. Yeah, but I understand. They've sought a, an extension. They've sought an extension. Yes. For the period. Okay, so that's the information coming through now because the initial communication from the presidency was that KPMG was to audit this and also bring out what they will find after two weeks, which has elapsed, we understand an extension has been sought. Okay, the special prosecutor is also taking interest in this GRA SML case. The government payroll investigations and eliminating ghost names. The sale of stool, state, and vested lands. That's another issue we'll come to as we go on. The sale of vested, the state stool, vested lands. There's also the Tema Air Refinery Lease Agreement with the Tema Energy Processing Limited. And then the Airbus scandal as well. All of these are ongoing investigations by the special prosecutor. You know, the, the likes of Professor Jampo make the point that mm -hmm. having his legs in so many of these investigations, then to make it even difficult. Because as we speak, there hasn't been any any yeah, but um, sometimes just stopping alone is uh, sufficient. Too. Like the tall one, just mm. stopping them is sufficient. Mm. Then we're going to fleece us like the SML thing again. We're just going to be a giveaway. It's good mm. the workers stood tall. But I understand they are victimizing two of them, right? Yeah, mm. two of the... Well, we yes, we oh, they should stand speak. up. We will continue to support them. Because this democracy, if we, people don't sacrifice, we will not make progress. Socrates said it, that democracy... It gives way for politicians, thieves, 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 bad people to ruin us. So it's good we keep fighting. Otherwise, it won't get better. At least, but you, you share in that concern that it, there hasn't been so far any um, 
judgment on any of these cases when it comes to uh, people either being prosecuted for for all the uh, cases that he's investigating? Well, I, I'm not sure. It's difficult. Maybe if there's further information, sometimes, you know, once again, let me quote uh, Socrates, you know, the thing is that it's your knowledge when you, I'm answering based on what I know. Mm -hmm. Unless there's further information, so far it's difficult to say as I share in the concern because I'm looking at the facts on the ground. So like the mm -hmm. NDA case I mentioned, mm -hmm. you see how it is, lots of the number of the witnesses are in Accra. But just within one year, I was the first to testify sometime in May last year, right? And within this period, a number of uh, witnesses have gone uh, up to Tamale and testified. So if I look, if I use that as a practical example, and knowing, don't forget, I, I, I am a private legal practitioner. I go to court almost every working day. It's normal. This, this is not a case that I would say is slow. On the contrary, the judge has been very hardworking and pushing. So, from a practical standpoint, it's difficult to say um, he's been slow. It's not a special prosecutor. It's a complex thing. Going into court, calling witnesses and the rest. Don't forget, look at the Apia Kubi one. You see how he's chickened out. So, how can we put the blame on the special prosecutor now? You see, unless, you know, somebody raised a concern that uh, maybe Apia Kubi himself should be charged for failing to report a crime. Yes, mm -hmm. you know, there is uh, an offense like that in our laws, except that we don't use it much often. If you see a crime and you fail to report, that in itself is a crime, right? Mm. Yes, 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 yes. We have this section 30, uh, 22 there about. Okay. Is there time for us to refer to it? Briefly. Yes. Briefly. Yes, yes. So maybe that should encourage people that, look, if you see something, say something. Yes, good. 22 is correct. Duty to prevent felony. That's, uh, I'm reading from the Act 29. Mm -hmm. That's the Criminal Offenses Act. Previously, it was called the Criminal Code, but that name doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. But at least to help people connect, uh, that's why I'm mentioning Criminal Code. It says, a person who, knowing that another person designs to commit or is committing a felony, fails to use all reasonable means to prevent the commission or completing the commission commits a misdemeanor. You see? Mm -hmm. Yes. So usually we uh, interpret it to mean reporting as well. So there's a duty. Yes. Once you know that, listen, he's doing this report. And there is one too about coup d'etat. Yes. Uh, uh, when you fail to report a coup d'etat, for that one, somebody has been co uh, convicted once okay. in the 70s. One of the coup d'etat. Mm -hmm. There's a young man who failed to report, even though he knew about the plot and all that, then he was convicted. L later on, I'll refer to the session and get to the title. Well, well it, it, it was just for the purpose of education, which is mm -hmm. very important, mm -hmm. um, the references that you have made. But yes. on the specific case of Cecilia Dapak, this is what the OSP said. This is the update in the OSP's half-year report. Yeah. On the case of Cecilia Dapak, we put it on the screen right now, the investigation according to the OSP, shows that the case is largely in the province of suspected money laundering. Mm -hmm. Yes, and structuring. Mm -hmm. By operation of the law, mm -hmm. there are other law enforcement agencies which are reposed, mm -hmm. continuous, with a direct mandate in respect of money laundering yeah. and structuring. Okay. On that score, the special prosecutor will issue directives and further action on the matter in due course. That is what the special prosecutor said, the latest with the Cecilia de Parque. So, well, I'll start mm -hmm. with you still, but let me now also acknowledge the presence of Kofi Adams, member of parliament for the Buem mm -hmm. constituency, is also a member of the Defense and Interior Committee of Parliament. Kofi. Adams, good morning. Welcome. Good morning. A happy new year to you as well. Thank you and happy new year to you. Good. And let me use the mm -hmm. opportunity to wish yeah. colleague panel members also a happy uh, new year. Indeed. Many, many happy returns. I know this year is going to be mm -hmm. a year of many things. Mm -hmm. It's a year of change. It's a year when Ghana will restore its dignity as a nation. A year when 
we will see leaders who will be elected that shall be accountable to the people, leaders that will have empathy, leaders that will have fellow feeling, leaders that will manage the resources of the country so well. And I'm very, very clear that we cannot have the same thing happen. If you keep what exists now, you will get more of the same things that we are complaining about every Saturday when we appear on this platform. Mm -hmm. We want that to end. Yeah. And that is why we must change leadership. Mm -hmm. And John Dramani so, Mahama yeah, comes in strong. We do not want the repetition. We do not want that next year we'll sit here every Saturday and just be lamenting and be complaining. That we have the opportunity to change that this year. And I know it will happen. <laughs> Your people in Bohem, we've been, we have been monitoring what's <laughs> been happening there as well. So that's a matter that we will deal with as we go on. Lamatik Pebo, this part of the OSP report, yes. the investigation showing that in the case of Cecilia Dapa is largely in the province of suspected money laundering. Mm -hmm. He says the monies that he has retrieved, the ones that were stolen, which at least based on the investigation so far, he hasn't gotten any information about the source of the money mm -hmm. from the suspects who are being investigated. Mm -hmm. He suspects case of money laundering and structuring. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, other agencies of state can investigate this better. And he is going to, well, he was very clear that he was going to issue directives and further action on the matter in due course. But the concerns that have come after this report was released was that we may not see the same level of commitment, transparency in investigating this Sister Yada Park case mm -hmm. if it moves from the Special Prosecutor's Office to other agencies as well. Mm -hmm. But this con conclusion that mm -hmm. he makes of this Yada Park case, yeah. Does it legally mean that the OSP may just be washing his hands off the Sicilia Dapa case? So it appears, yes, because he's clear that so far he doesn't find uh, any offense within his mandate. So once that is his position, or that is the state of the evidence right now, it means that he has no option but to let go. But, you know, fortunately, under the law, uh, this Section 76 of the Act, eh, mm -hmm. they can collaborate with other state agencies. So I, I, I'm very sure that he would also keep an eye on it because you never know when other evidence will come up that may bring the case back to the province or mm -hmm. within the mandate of the OSP. And let, let's be very clear. I have said it, that, and we used to say it even here, some, mm -hmm. sometime during the debates, when, when I say debates, of course, we are not in parliament, but here mm -hmm. it is a debate, when the matter came up, that it may well happen that, look, OSP may not find evidence of corruption. Yeah, because the person who gave Madame Dapa the money has been watching us and having a good laugh all the time, that you will never catch me. You will never catch me. And so far, yes, he's been that lucky that we are not catching him, right? Yes, but we said for us, this is a court of public opinion. And for us, you see the OSP report is shown that Madame Dapa could not account for the money. So we have used it for what we want to use it for. In the court of public opinion, this case is supported Kennedy Japan's uh, cry that the, the, the members of this administration are stealing our money. They are stealing, they are stealing, they are stealing and stashing the money abroad. And so we've used it what? Turn, lash them. We've lashed them. Today we are repeating it. We are admonishing ourselves. So we are telling Kofi Adams and Co. that as they prepare, it looks like, though I'm for a third force, seriously for a third force, but it looks like a third force people don't want to come up. Maybe they've forgotten what Pitobi did. So assuming it <clears throat> comes to the turn of Kofi Adams and Co., they will be well advised not to repeat what Madame Dapa has done. So you see that it's been good for that for us. It's not all the time that you get a criminal conviction. But if you look at the debate, this, uh, what do you call it, suspected case of corruption and corruption-related offense uh, concerning Madame Dapa is generated. It's good. It's helped our discourse. You see, it has shamed President Kufuado. It's put him... But, but beyond where, the court of public opinion, yes. what has to be done to ensure... And that's where the concern is, that yes, it would, it would be 
use in, in the court of public mm -hmm. opinion, you know, so, some of the statements yeah. that we have heard on this platform will be made. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, beyond that, what you, happens? And that's yeah. why the OSP came in. Good. And investigations have been conducted. He says it borders on money laundering, but mm -hmm. I would rather other agencies take up the investigation going oh. forward. Okay. Yes, so good. When we say uh, it, he doesn't have an option, it's because he doesn't have an option but to let the case go to the police and possibly Yoko also getting involved because Section 79 of his act mentions the mandate, corruption and corruption-related offenses. If we mention them briefly, let's just see. Those offenses, that's uh, dishonestly receiving, extortion, cause, uh, using public office for profit, Corrupt, prom, uh, this is influence peddling, that's the section uh, 252. Corruption, the, the, the conventional one we know, uh, corruption, bribery and corruption in public office, that's the section 239. Then 253, 253 is corrupt promise by judicial officer. 254, corrupt selection of a juror, yeah, in the court. 256, corruption, intimidation and personation. Then 258, falsification of a return of election. So there are the electoral offenses, right? And then you go on and on. So the rest of them, then the procurement offenses. So what we are saying, and you know there's a, a high court decision when Martin Amidu was a special prosecutor, one of the Ayariga cases, taxation and taxes and the rest. The court threw it out, right? Yeah, so the special prosecutor has no option. And let's also mention, there's been a new development even in the area of uh, money laundering. The Supreme Court gave a decision sometime in, uh, I've forgotten the month, it must have been July, yeah, July thereabout, about money laundering, where the Supreme Court clarified that even Yoko, Yoko's mandate to investigate corruption has been clarified. Yoko, uh, sorry, uh, money laundering. The Supreme Court uh, decided in ex parte uh, Malik, or Ibrahim Malik, or was it Malik Ibrahim, which, uh, I mean, the two names are there, that Yoko doesn't have the mandate to investigate money laundering if it involves only private persons. That is to say, if government money is not the money that was stolen or used in the money laundering, it is not the business of Yoko. You see, so the point is that, you know, we are a country of laws, so we have to use the law. So even Yoko, that's the... Uh, big body for investigating organized crime and, and, and money laundry is loomed large in the uh, mandate of Yoko, the Supreme Court has clarified that that mandate is not as big as Yoko used to see. So it's clear if, if, if it is money laundry involving private persons only, that's private money, not pr private persons, sorry. If it's private money only, then it goes to the police. You see, so uh, Mr. Jabin has no option. Once he says it's money laundering, he's seen and structured. The, all the money is involved. Yes, then it has to go there. But as we said, based on the law, naturally, as the case unravels, if they see corruption, then they'll be back again to the OSP. And we are hoping that eventually they'll be back to the OSP. But the curious thing is that, you know, Mr. Jabin sometimes doesn't give us, um, what do you call it, um, Enough details. You see, let's mention this. It's not to go into a full lecture on money laundering, but let's just mention something small. You see, when as soon as you mention money laundering, the first thing, that money you've seen, so what money are we talking about? The $1 million in her house, the $2.8 million in some of, uh, sorry, $2.8 million Ghana in some of the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the accounts, right? Then when they went there, they got, $590,000 cash, right? Hard cash dollars, right? All those monies and et cetera, the transactions, the other transactions in the, uh, what do you call it, the banks, right? As soon as you mention money laundering, any lawyer will tell you that the first thing is, ah, what's the predicate offense? When we say predicate offense, it means that before, where did the, which offense brought about that money? Very, very uh, tech, uh, I mean, critical. And it's the first thing. So what I'm interested in is that, why is Mr. Jabin hiding the predicate offense from us? Where was it stolen from? Is it stealing? I'm not saying it's stealing, mm -hmm. but it's a critical thing. You can't say you are doing money. The fact that you see a billion cities here today, right? With, uh, let's say, touch wood, maybe, uh, who should we use? Let's use a CMC. <laughs> Nobody wants uh, stealing to be used by him. So if you see 
um, let's say, a billion Ghana cities. It doesn't matter the amount of money you see with somebody, but you, you see that clearly is beyond his means. If you say you want to do, a, you want to uh, prosecute for money laundering, right? Because you are saying that the person stole or the person did whatever, narcotics, whatever, tax evasion, whatever. You must identify that particular thing that the person did wrong, which the person then got that money from, and is now engaged in money laundering. So what we, are, we should be interested in is that, hey, if Mr. Jabin says it's money laundering, then what is that predicate offense? What did Madame Dapa do wrong? So that's the meaning of it. That's the meaning of it. To say this case is money laundering. So it means that Mr. Jabin has seen a new offense. There, is, there must be an offense before you learn that. And when we say money laundering, that's washing, right? Taking the money and disguising it, turning it into various. There must be an offense. What is this offense? We should be interested. You get it? Yes. yes. So that one, because he's, uh, Jabin is a technical person, so he knows what he's saying. So there's a certain offense he has seen. Mm. We, we haven't seen it. So, well, let the matter, it may go to Yoko, it may go to... Uh, no, but even the fact that he says he doesn't know the source, then it means that perhaps he has to let it go to both Yoko and the police. Because can you imagine, if the police alone take it, go another six months or whatever, at, well, the Ejabin took over in July, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's been at six months or something. Uh -huh. So if they go another six months and then police say, oh, it's government money, then it means I'll be back to square one. The police have to wash their hands and then send the case back to Yoko. So I'm sure he knows it. So I can foresee that Yoko and the police will have to work on this together so that we don't uh, lose time. And so this also teaches us a lesson that then perhaps in future, at the beginning of the investigations, maybe other uh, agencies yes, should be involved, of mm -hmm. course, but the information will be managed in such a way that you know, if you have too many people getting access, others will leak it and the rest. Mm -hmm. But, yes, we are aware of that. But somehow, there should be a way that the other agencies should be given some visibility so that they can also start warming up so that in, in the event that it turns out that it's not a matter for the special prosecutor, that agency can hit the ground running, you see. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we should be learning uh, from some of these experiences. I see.